Hey everybody, my name is Tim Richman and I want to welcome you to video 3 in my series on how to design origami using box pleating. I want to say thank you to everybody who's been waiting patiently for this video to come out. Uh, I know it took a while. I took a trip to Thailand and I had a great experience there. Uh, I was able to teach a uh, traditional origami class to a couple classes of kids. It was a really rewarding experience, uh, but I'm back now. And I also want to say thank you to everybody who likes, comments, and subscribes to the channel. Uh, it really does help, especially when you leave comments that uh, give me suggestions for things that I could be doing with this series. Uh, one suggestion that I got is that in the previous couple of videos, I spent a long time uh, uh, showing each step of how to fold uh, a basic grid. And uh, that's a little bit extraneous perhaps to, to some people with a, a higher skill set for box pleating. Um, the idea with this series is that when I started out I would do kind of simplified uh, you know um, techniques and as the series goes on that it would get more and more complex so uh, in those first couple of videos you know I made an effort to show everything but as the videos go on uh, I'll be cutting some of that stuff out and assuming that your skill level is improving as the series goes on and if you need to you can always go back and use the previous videos as a reference for how to do some of those things. And I just want to show off real briefly this is an example of the kind of models that uh, we're working up toward. This is a model that I finished redesigning recently. This is Ridley, uh, the 2.1 version or Super Ridley. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to call it. Maybe you can weigh in in the comments. Uh, but you can see he has teeth now as well as a color change eye. The wings are a little bigger, stuff like that. And uh, this is, both of these models are unfinished. Uh, uh, they're waiting to get the MC paste. Uh, but this is Smaug. And uh, I wanted to make a a set of my advanced models uh, just to just to have in case I go to a convention or anything like that. Uh, so these are uh, some examples of models that you potentially could uh, design on your own uh, by the end of this series. That's the idea. In the first video I showed you guys how to make a basic element and in the second video I was explaining how you could take that crease pattern for that basic element, put it in the middle of a larger grid size, and as long as the crease is running off the edge of that element matched up with whatever was on the side of it that you could put more than one element on the same crease pattern. In this video I want to start showing you how to expand upon that basic element to make different structures. Uh, for instance in this video how to make uh, something like an arm with fingers at the end of it. Things along that line. And uh, in the next video I want to show you how to do some uh, other interesting features like wings, things like that, and uh, by the end of that we'll have the tools to start messing around and making different kind of creatures with, uh, with uh, the tools that we've built up. So uh, just to recap, if we make one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be the crease pattern for a basic structure coming out of the middle of the page that would be six units long. So from this center point to the edge, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's six units uh, in any direction, horizontal or vertical, from that center point. But what if we wanted that point to have some branches branching off of the end of it? So what we're going to do, erase all this, we're going to use the same piece of paper. Alright, so let's instead, let's make a row of elements that will be two units tall, right next to each other. And I want this branch to be six units long as well. Let's put boxes around each of these just to delineate them from anything else that we'll be doing. Okay, so there are six units hanging out next to one another. So we want the edge of this to be six units away from any one of these points. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's just go ahead and do that all the way around. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. And uh, let's put a box around that as well, just to show what that would look like. So this area of paper that's surrounding these elements is what's known as a river. It is different from this because it's not a box. It's uh, kind of like a ribbon of paper that goes around that. And what that's going to do is create the length that separates these elements in the middle from whatever's happening in the rest of the model. One other thing that we need to do is extend these diagonal creases out to the corner. These already join so you don't need to extend these diagonals, just the ones out to the corner, like that. All right, let's collapse this and see what it looks like. And here's what it creates. So the, uh, the creases that run off the edge have to go somewhere. So those represent what's happening here. But then in the middle, what we have is a branch. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then uh, at the end of that, it branches off into one, two, three points that are each one, two units long. Just real quick, I want to show you some ways that you can shape something like this. Uh, if these were fingers, these are a bit um, wide, so something you could do is take this raw edge here and fold it over to meet the center or close to it uh, like, like this. And then you could even uh, open the model up and sink that portion down and that kind of uh, if you do that to all four sides of this flap that thins it down a bit and uh, something else you can do I have this oriented so that the flat sides are here but you could also open it up from the middle and push the the sides out like this instead and now your center point is uh, your outside points are kind of nested inside the the sides of that center point you could expand it out a little bit like this push in this top point and sink that and kind of pull these out to the side and then you get something similar to uh, how I created the the horns on the top of Smile Gear. Uh, that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, the the uh, units I used at the end are a little bit longer. I think these are four units tall uh, but pretty much that's what I did. There's a third one that gets sunk down and then folded back 
but that allows me to have one on either side like that. And moving along, what if instead what I wanted to have is uh, a branch that instead of having all three at the top like this, I wanted two up here and then this third one I wanted further down for whatever reason. Uh, we would just need a, a different setup here. So let's put two find my center here. Okay. Let's go about there. That looks good. So we'll make two elements that'll make a point that are two units tall next to each other. These are going to be the ones that are at the top. I want the total length of this thing to be six units again. So let's go out two from that. We'll make a river that's two units wide around these two elements. And what we could do is draw the third one out here the same size and then put a river around that. So one, two, one, two, one, two. When we come over to here, uh, we need another diagonal like this and then have it come over but this is a little bit cumbersome it's going to collapse a little awkwardly it might not fit together as well with uh, other elements that we want to put close to this one so what I recommend doing instead is uh, we're going to erase some of what we've done over here Okay, so instead start from the top here, put the top half of that element here, and then the bottom half down here. And uh, what we've done is stretched out or elongated this element so that it fits uh, the, the side of our rectangle over here. And then you just finish up the rest of that second river around the edge there. All right, let's collapse this and find out what happens. And what we end up with is a branch that's one, two, three, four, five, six units tall. We have one branch that's two units from the base, and then two units above that. We have two branches like that. So it uh, that's our first one, and this is our new one here. That's different. Uh, some tip to shape this. If you wanted this one to come to a point, uh, kind of look in the side here, uh, open the layers to either side, and just uh, push in
that bit of paper there. Uh, so what we're doing pretty much is, you know, you, you make a crease diagonally from the end to the corner of that box, and you're just sinking it into the side there, so that it's going to resemble uh, what's going on up here. And then you can sink those further as well uh, to shape this down if you wanted that to come to more of a point. So I'm going to wrap up this video, but uh, uh, before I end it, I want to explain a little bit more about what we just did. So a normal point, the center of it, if you want it to come off the top of the paper like this, the intersection of the very middle of it has to be between two valley folds. Okay, and then you just pretty much draw an X where the diagonal creases are all the same length, and then that gives you, this would give you a, a point that's four units long. To expand this out, the general rule to that is that, here, let's go out to the side like this. So. So this would be the crease that's exactly in the middle between here and here. This is going to give us a flap that's exactly the same number of units long, but this crease that's in between these two has to be a valley fold. If it was a mountain fold, the ones next to it would be valleys, and you wouldn't be able to uh, wrap the paper to either side. So essentially what you're doing is you're just wrapping more layers here around a point. Okay. Like that. And to do that, this center one has to be a valley fold. There are some exceptions to that. Um, something you could do is start it off to the side. So you have an uneven amount of layers. This layer, this side has less layers than this side. And you can kind of get around that. But then it gets awkward around the edge when you try to uh, uh, match it up with other points when, when you're collapsing it. One final thing to know about wrapped points is that they can end, uh, this, this point here, can end at the intersection of a mountain and a mountain crease. And what that's going to look like is instead of the crease running into the corner there being a valley fold, it's going to be a mountain fold. So you have this ridge running all the way up into this point here. And uh, that's useful for some things too, uh, but you wouldn't be able to shape it as easily uh, if you wanted to make this come to a point. It doesn't sink as easily, but that's something else that you can use. And then uh, again, if your center crease is a mountain fold, you can still go with that, but it's going to be off center. So let's put one layer over to the side like that and then we'll come over here different things that you can do with points like this. They're a little more versatile than uh, just a simple X point um, and uh, they can help fill in the gap uh, and shore things up when you're adding different size elements together in a, in a, in a more complicated 
setup of uh, origami features when you're when you're making a complete model. All right, so that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to make some wings, how to start uh, manipulating the paper so you can do structural color change and a couple of things like that. And then in the videos after that, we'll start looking at um, how to make uh, a different variety of grids. So in case you know you want something beyond the normal 2, 4, 8, 16, you know, uh, grid that most people work with, you can start to divide the paper into thirds and then have uh, 6, 12, 24, 48 uh, uh, box grids, uh, 5, 10, 20, 40, things like that. Because um, as time goes on and you start making more and more complex things, you'll need more and more specific box grids and you want to utilize as much of your paper as possible, meaning you don't want to fold a 64 by 64 grid and then trim off the extra. What you want to do, ideally, is to maximize the potential of whatever size paper you have, say it's a 40 by 40 centimeter square, uh, you want to be able to use that entire thing, divide that entire length into whatever grid size that you want, rather than trimming anything off the edge. Then we'll start getting into actually composing, uh, going from a, an, an idea, say a Pegasus, something like that, and then start putting all these elements that we've been learning into use to make a, a structure like that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps people to uh, understand that uh, the quality of these videos. So if you liked it, please leave something below and um, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Thanks everybody for watching.